Welcome back. We have made it to the 12th video of the 12 Bakes of Christmas for 2020. I'm Stephanie Seving from Quilt Addicts Anonymous, and today we're going to finish up the tree skirt that we've been working on for, this is our third video on it. So in the first video, I showed you how to piece everything using a strip roll, and then we talked about how to layer it and baste it with feasible batting, which worked out fabulously to be able to quilt it on the home sewing machine. Everything stayed together real nice. I don't have any um, pleats on the backing, and the top looks fabulous as well and then also now today we're going to talk about how to cut up a seam for this so that way we can get it around our tree and then also how to trim it down to get a perfect circle and then we're going to show you how to do bias binding so we got a lot to show so I'm going to go ahead and get in on today's videos um, as always the pattern for this is free we usually do free patterns for our 12 makes of Christmas series and so you can go check that out over at shop quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We have supplies, at least when I'm filming this, to be able to do it. Otherwise, you can definitely raid your stash. I'm sure a lot of us have a holiday strip roll that we thought we were going to get to, but didn't. So if you can't find that, but while I'm filming this, we do still have quite a bit of the Polar Magic from Figo uh, left, so you can definitely get that. You can get some a strip roll and some coordinating binding to go with it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I've got to mark out two different measurements so that way I can trim this up. All right, guys. So I'm human, I make mistakes, and I realize I just filmed the half hour of me getting the tree skirt cut apart without turning on the overhead camera. So I'm gonna walk you through what you're supposed to be doing, and I think you'll be able to catch on because it's not really hard, it just takes a little bit of time. So I'm gonna walk you through what I did, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we're gonna pretend that this is all still one piece because this is a third video I filmed in two days and I've spent like six hours quilting this yesterday. Not quite, a long time. So I'm, I'm tired, I made a mistake. So what you wanna do is uh, typical tree trunks, if you have a live tree, are between four and eight inches wide. Um, I don't see myself getting a giant one, so I decided I wanted to make a six inch hole in the center for mine. So I just took my little tape measure here, you could use a ruler as well, and I put the three inch mark right in the center of the star, and then I took my friction gel pen, a pencil would work too, just don't use an ink pen, because that could run if you ever have to wash it. And then I just marked um, going around, and then I just kept rotating around and marking as I went. And then I took my pen and I just kind of traced the line until I had that. And then I measured out to the side. So I was able to get 25 inches from the center out. You might be able to get a little more or a little less than that. What you need to do is measure to the center of your tree skirt. So here's my center star. You wanna follow that out to get to the center. And I was able to get a little over 25 inches from the center to there. So I just decided 25 was good. That way I'd have a 50 inch wide tree skirt. So what I did, and if you don't have a tape measure and you just wanna use your quilting ruler and do 24 inches, that's fine too, is I measured from the center out to 25 inches and then I took my marking tool and I made a little mark and then I moved it out a little more and I made a little mark and I kept doing that one wedge at a time and once I made my marks at about each diamond I again took the marking tool and I did a little feather around so that way I could uh, make that nice circular wedge and by having the marks every you know diamond or so it made it pretty easy to kind of connect the diamond dots there and the dashes. So then when that was all said and done, I went in and I just went around and cut on everything. And then I came to the seam between one of the wedges and I cut straight up that seam and that felt really bad. Like it feels so weird to cut through your quilting, but you gotta get it on the tree somehow. And then I cut into my wedge in the center to get that uh, circle out. So that is how you are going to prep to get to this stage. I am sorry that I didn't have it where I was actually doing it on camera, but you know, it's 2020. Crazy stuff is happening. We can't keep anything straight. It is what it is. All right, so now we're going to move on to how to do our bias binding, and I've got all my cameras on, so you're going to see that 
really well. So we're gonna do that next. So most people, when they're doing bias binding, don't work with more than half a yard at a time because it can be a little challenging to work with longer lengths because it's harder to measure it all with one six by 24 inch ruler. So what I've done is I've laid it out on my mat and I've got everything nice and square here uh, for my edges because I just cut this. But right now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut off this bottom selvage as well. All right, so we've already talked about the lines that come on your rulers because we use the 60 degree line to measure when we're doing this. But right now, I wanna pay attention to that 45 degree line because I need to get a 45 degree triangle cut out of this. I'm gonna work to arrange this ruler so that the 45 degree line is even with the edge here. And then I'm gonna start cutting across. All right, so obviously I can't make it all the way across with this 45 degree line lined up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull it towards me a little bit here. And then I'm going to line this up again. And I'm just going to have it to where my ruler is going all the way out to the edge, but I've got a good chunk that I can line up to make sure I'm still nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of the way. Now don't toss this piece because we can get a couple long strips out of it, but for the most part, I'm gonna cut from this piece here and get as many long strips as I can out of that and see if that's gonna be enough for what we need. And then we'll come back and use this triangle. All right, so now I can line this up and get my two and a half inch mark, even with the edge that I cut, and I can start cutting those strips out on the bias. And we're gonna have to pull it down a little bit to make it across, but it's not too much so that it's unmanageable, like if you had a larger length of fabric. Then you're just gonna keep working your way across until you cut as many as you can. When they start to get tiny, you can cut them, you can use them. It just is gonna be a little bit more sewing when you're assembling your binding. I'm gonna stop cutting now that I'm to this little one because we're really not gonna get too much out of this and it's not really worth sewing in. So from here, it's actually pretty similar to regular binding. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to arrange it perpendicular to the strip below and then I'm gonna stitch from side to side so that way when I open it up, I get a nice straight seam. Normally I switch to my regular pressing foot for this, but I still have my walking foot on from last night, so I'm just gonna leave it, because it'll work for this project. Then I won't have to switch everything back, so it'll go much faster. All right, so once I get one done, I just kind of throw it into my lap and I grab the next one, and then I'll lay them perpendicular, sew down again, and just keep going until I've sewn them all together. When I'm trimming off my ends, what I'd like to do is do it all at once with a mat, my rotary cutter, and a ruler. So I just line that quarter inch mark up on the seam and trim them and just work my way down. This next part is also the exact same as cutting your binding by the width of fabric. We're just going to fold it over, meeting the long edges and we're just gonna press it down just like we normally would. The only difference is, is because this is on the bias, it's got a lot more stretch to it, so it's gonna go around those curves really beautifully. Some people prefer this for regular quilting too because it's supposed to be a little sturdier to use it like this over time. Uh, you're much less likely to have runs and things. I personally have never had issues with binding wearing out because I have a lot of quilts and there aren't that many that get used so often uh, that that's ever been a problem. All right, so I'm ready to start attaching the binding to the tree skirt. So I'm gonna start on one of the straight edges that's gonna form the slit that is going to go around the tree because it's gonna be a lot easier to join with continuous binding on a straight edge than it will be on a curve when we get ready to join everything at the end. So I'm just going to bring this over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to start just the way I always would. I'm gonna start it right about in the middle and then I'm gonna move down so that way I've got a good 12 inches or so in between uh, where I can join those edges at the end. I'm gonna sew a few forward and a few back to anchor those in. Then I'm just gonna keep going like I would normally until I get to that curve. Then we're gonna have to do a miter. All 
All right, so I'm coming up to where the curve starts. So I, it's close enough to a 45 degree angle to where I'm gonna treat this like a regular miter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I've stopped with my needle down, quarter inch away, and then I'm gonna turn the work toward me so that the curve is facing toward me like it normally would. Now I'm gonna lift up my needle and I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit and I'm gonna make my mitered curve. Now, if you've never done this before, um, we have a video that is just on binding, so you can check that out as part of our beginner quilting video series. But I'm gonna get that folded over and in line. Now I'm gonna stick it back underneath and start sewing. And now the rest of this is just like quilting a regular straight piece, uh, except we're gonna have a slight curve to it. And it is a real slight curve, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal for you guys to go around. Now I've got my hand back here. I'm not pulling on it. I'm just guiding to help make sure that that curve stays nice and even. Now when I'm ready to position, what I do is I kind of position it to where I can keep my fingers on top to keep it even, the edges even with the edge of the tree skirt. And then I just remove those fingers as I come to them. So that way I can keep on sewing. All right, so I've made it around the outer circumference and I'm coming up to the corner again. I'm gonna stop about a quarter inch away again and do my miter so I can do my other side of my slit. So this is nice and easy, we just have a straight away. All right, so now I've reached the point of my inner circle. So I'm gonna do a miter going into this as well. It's not gonna be a true 90 degree angle coming into this, but I'm going to line it up as best I can with the curve once I turn it. All right, so since this is going to be such a sharp curve, I'm not gonna be able to take the long, broad strokes that I did when I was on the outside. I'm gonna to need to be repositioning this quite often. I really can only sew a few stitches at a time before I need to turn the work. Right, so that was pretty slow going, but I made it around that inner circle. So now I'm gonna turn the corner one more time and get ready to join my edges with the continuous binding. All right, I've got maybe eight inches or so before where I started. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce those stitches and take it off the machine so I can get ready for my continuous binding. All right, so I'm gonna come in about halfway in between where I ended and where I started. And I actually have a seam here. So I'm just gonna clip uh, perpendicular to that right before that seam because we don't wanna sew over a seam to create a new seam, it'll just be a mess. So now I'm going to measure over two and a quarter inches. And I like to do a quarter less because then I end up, it always ends up working out just right. And especially with the bias, there's gonna be more stretch to it. So typically you would do two and a half because that was the width of our binding, but I don't know, it just works better when you do a little bit less. It gives a little bit of stretch and it works out and is nice and flat when you're all done. All right, so I am laying my ruler out with the tip of it. It can be any ruler, normally I use a square one, but this is the one I have on hand. So I've got the tip even with the edge here and I'm going to lay my other strip out until I get to two and a quarter. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that across. And then I'm going to join them like I would a regular binding strip. So I've got my edges perpendicular like so. This is just like when we were doing it before, just we're not gonna have the overlap. We're just gonna stitch from one end to the other. 
Right, I'm gonna put a little pin in. I like to have my pin come out kind of close to where I'm gonna start stitching. And then I like to pin here across where I'm going to be sewing across. Now I'm gonna stitch across here and cut off my edges and I'll be ready to go. If this was a little too quick for you and you need more explanation on continuous binding, please check out our beginner quilting tutorial series. We have one that is a very long but very in-depth uh, video on binding and it will show you exactly what you need to do if you are having questions about this. Once you start doing continuous binding, you will never want to do it any other way. It looks so slick. All right, so before I trim off those edges, what I do is I lay it flat to make sure it looks right. It's going straight and it looks like it's going to cover without any uh, wiggles or anything in there. And it is. It looks like it's going to go very well. So I'm going to go ahead and clip off my corner. And I don't press this next bit. I just kind of tuck it in as I'm working to get it where it needs to go. So I start a couple inches before where I end it off and I'm gonna reinforce those stitches again. Then I run my finger in here to tuck it so that all those seams are going toward me. And then once I get to where I can see my end here, I'm gonna give it a little bit of tension so that it's nice and flat and I don't end up with any puckers in there because that can happen sometimes. All right, I've reached the part where I started. I'm gonna sew beyond it an inch or two and reinforce those seams and I'm good. I have finished sewing the binding on by machine. I'm gonna finish the rest of this up by hand. All you're gonna do is you're gonna flip your uh, seam to the wrong side and you're just gonna work your way around doing a blind stitch. And again, if you don't know what that is, we have a video that's very in depth on how to do binding. This one is just different because you have to cut it on that bias so that it will roll nicely around the curves. And it's also really fun because whenever you have a pattern like this that starts out as like a vertical stripe, it just looks so pretty when it gets turned over because it looks like a diagonal uh, going around your entire quilt. So it's really very, very pretty. Well, thanks so much for following along with our 12 Makes of Christmas series. I hope you've been inspired to make something new to make this holiday season a little bit more festive. I know it is not going to be the same as previous years, so having a new pretty things around the house are definitely fun. Again, at least at the time that I'm filming this, we do have quite a few of this strip roll still in stock. So you can check it out. It's Polar Magic by Figo. It's really pretty. I've got one right here and it is by Lemony and it's just so, so cute. And one thing that I realized as I was, you know, going through this process, I normally don't have the pattern written when I am um, uh, starting this, I've got this like beautiful mind mess of notes and math, but you are, can get away with not using two of the strips from your strip set. So if I were able to do this again, I would leave out the yellow because even though the yellow is in here, it's in some of the trees and it's in the gold, it's just like so much of a pop and I would have rather had it without that yellow if I were doing it again. So check it out. The pattern is free on our website. Just search for Jelly Roll or Tree Skirt and you will find it. And it's super cute, it's super fun. It's gonna look great under the tree. And it's gonna be a decent sized tree skirt. The thing is 50 inches uh, in, not diameter. Is it diameter? Radius, I don't know. From side to side, it's 50 inches. It's been a while since I've taken geometry class, even though I use it daily for quilt math. But it's a lot of fun. I really am glad that I went in and did all the extra quilting. I think it looks fabulous, and I'm really excited to put this underneath my tree. And, you know, it's not, it's not your general old St. Nick and nothing against that. It's just not for me, but I really like the, the color palette of this, a little bit of pink and just the fun, funky little characters are fantastic. So I, I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you have, please like, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join our email list. We send you a 10% off coupon code you can use on your first purchase with us. So check that out and we'll be sending you out tutorials weekly from here on out. We go a little nuts at Christmas time because it's fun making holiday projects. They're cute. All right. So with that, thanks so much. Have a merry holiday and whatever you celebrate. And until next time, happy quilting.